I have been excited to do this one for a while now, let me tell you. And since Diablo 4 has now hit the open beta, we've been able to play the very first act of the game, and we have some very interesting story points to delve our teeth into. Also, an important note to remember, when Diablo 4 fully releases in June, we will do a complete breakdown of the entire story, so be sure to keep your eye out for that one to continue on from this video. Spoiler warning for what's ahead. We open up on a cold, desolate landscape, while an unnamed narrator explains about Sanctuary. He says how Sanctuary was never meant for humankind, that it was forged as a refuge from the war between the heavens and hell itself, but instead it just became another battleground in the conflict. A secretive group called the Herodrum has kept mortals safe during the conflict, however it's now a shadow of its former self. The Sanctuary's ancient creators have now returned to claim the hearts of humankind. He mentions how this is the story of their downfall. Our protagonist is slowly making their way through this horrendous weather before reaching a statue. We begin to hear whispers from the surrounding trees before our horse gets spooked and runs away into the trees. A pretty dumb choice on that one horsey since now he has become food for whatever was in the woods. Our light goes out as the whispers continue so we make the right decision and get the hell out of there. Freezing to death, we find a cave that helps isolate us from the blizzard outside and we begin to fall asleep at the entrance. Now, I have seen my fair share of survival shows, Man vs. Wild, Bear Grylls, Hell's Kitchen, and one thing I've learned is to always make a fire in a cold place and also to never fall asleep in the cold, especially when there is satanic wolves prowling outside. We awake and decide to find better shelter in a nearby town. We manage to find our way to an abandoned town called Nevesk when we hear some voices from a nearby house. Turns out, not so abandoned after all. The people in the house are talking about demons in the darkness, and one of them is injured from a bite. Apparently, the bite victim wandered into town and began causing trouble. He begins speaking about demons that are spilling out from a nearby ruin to kill them all. The locals take us to their tavern and explain how the ruin from the north has evil stirring from within, and that the monk must have gone inside, and that even a holy man like himself is not safe from being driven mad by the evils inside. We can see that the town has its own small community as Vani asks us to help the town out by protecting them from the demons that are spilling out from the ruins. We agree to help out and head out. We get into the ruins and it is indeed full of all types of nasty, undead and demonic creatures that we dispose of. We return to the town so they can declare us the community's hero and they thank us profusely for saving the town and invite us for some festivities. Lots of beer and food in celebration of our achievement. We start partying it up with the locals before everything around us begins to slow down. We pass out and it's unfortunately not because of all the alcohol we consume. Turns out... We got roofied from these townspeople. A man named Oswin begins bringing in a goddamn wheelbarrow to drag us out of this tavern while the townspeople stand around watching us spookily. I've seen enough horror movies and TV shows to know just how this is going to end. We get an interesting proverb or saying that comes up while our unconscious ass is being wheeled out. And I quote, I saw my corpse and from my mouth crawled hatred. A father burned his children on a pyre, and a mother molded a new age from the ashes. Also, puppy, at least there's one good boy in this damn town. That's uh, not part of the quote, by the way, sorry. I saw the weak made strong, a pack of lambs feasting on wolves. Tears of blood rained on a desert jewel, and the way to hell has torn asunder. Then came a spear of light, piercing hatred's heart, and he who was bound in chains was set free. This is described as Rathma's prophecy. I will come back to this prophecy at the end of the video, once we have a bit more context. We finally reach our destination in the town's barn. And let's just say that there has clearly been some extracurricular activities taking part in here. Oswin grabs some petals and begins some form of ritual by feeding us some blood. A man comes from behind and helps us out, and we have to fight the locals. We thank the locals for their hospitality as Vani dies. She mentions that we are now blessed like them now. We realize that this man was actually the madman from the shed earlier. He explains that the heretics drugged him after he returned from the ruins, just like us. When he came to his wits, he tried to escape, but couldn't get inside the chapel since it was locked. We begin to vomit, and Isif says that we are vomiting petals of blood. Not 
petals and blood, but literal petals made from blood. We tell him that they fed it to us, and he mentions that it's from a ritual, and that we should head to the chapel to find answers since they must keep it locked for a reason. We find a key on Varney and head to the town's chapel. Inside, we find more petals on the ground. As we inspect them, we see a vision from the past. The town's priest is ringing the church's bells for morning prayer. We can hear the laughter of children and we see that the town is a much happier place. The townspeople gather as we can see one of them is Varney. The priest calls them shameful since the father has granted them a path to salvation, but they stray from it at every opportunity. Drinking, gambling, stealing, all shameful acts. We begin seeing blood petals fall from above the priest as they fall onto his Bible. We hear the voice of Lilith from behind. She mentions to the priest that sin is their birthright. We get this really cool but incredibly creepy shot of this demonic creature's silhouette being contrasted by the church's window. She says how the lords of hell are coming to devour this world, and their salvation is not in the light but instead in themselves. That their faith has been taught to them to deny their heart's desires and turn them into a prisoner within themselves. The priest is having a mild end of life crisis at this stage, which I can hardly blame him for. But the townspeople are slowly turning into Lilith's way of thinking, before the priest pleads with them to resist her temptations. The townspeople kill the priest as Lilith speaks to a man named Elias. He tells her that the townspeople have awakened. She responds that they are the first of many and that their true work begins now. We awake outside the church to speak to Iosef about our vision. When he hears the description of Lilith, he says that it can't be possible and that he must report back to the cathedral immediately. He tells us to look for a hermit to the north. He apparently has questionable loyalty but knows about the forbidden and asks us to bring him to the cathedral in Kjovashad. We agree and head north. When we arrive at the cabin, we find it empty and begin searching the place for clues. The hermit arrives home with a deer and a voice that the gods would envy. If you're going to trespass into my home, rifle through my fingers. He invites us to supper. We tell him about everything that has happened thus far and he mentions that we are getting visions because the villagers fed us the blood of Lilith, the daughter of hatred, the mother of sanctuary. She was banished ages ago and this entire world was her creation. He says that it was prophesied that she would return one day. We asked him what she wants and she says that he doesn't know. The sanctuary has been a battleground for the conflict between angels and demons, but Lilith doesn't serve either side. Instead, she has her own plans for humankind. We ask him if we are now corrupted since we drank her blood, to which the hermit says that he isn't sure, but we undoubtedly share a connection with her. We say that we will use the connection to figure out what she's after, and the hermit agrees to help us. We reach Kjovashed. Uh, the hermit, whose name is Lorith Nar, is buying a horse from the town stables. We ask him what he is doing, and he tells us that while we go to the cathedral, he plans to head out to the dry steps to search for the pale man from our vision. He is referring to Elias. We go on to ask him about Inarius. He tells us about how the cathedral loved to go on about him. His imprisonment in hell, his valiant escape, and then his glorious return to sanctuary. The world he created. This is the entity that the priest from the vision was referring to as the father. He is an angel, not God, if you understandably mistook that. But he and Lilith are jointly responsible for the creation of Sanctuary. Anarius was the father and Lilith is the mother. Lorath goes on to mention that the cathedral never mentions how being chained to hell for a few millennia really turns into a bit of an ass. He asks us to retrieve some things from the local blacksmith, which turns out to be his old weapon and amulet, suggesting that he led a very interesting life before becoming a hermit. As he begins to leave, we hear narration again, this time revealing that the narrator is actually Lorith Nar, speaking from the future on these past events. At the time, after meeting us, that he believed he had a chance to protect humanity, that the Wanderer's connection to her gave him hope, but he laughs afterwards, suggesting that having hope was stupid in hindsight. We head to the Cathedral of Light and find Iosef before the Reverend Mother Prava. She is giving him a blessing. Iosef asks us why Lorith didn't accompany us and what could possibly be of more import. We respond with only one word, Lilith. 
Mother Prava explains that she received words from one of her knights of a demon that matches our description of Lilith exactly. She asks us to travel to Yelesna to verify the sighting since we have first account knowledge. She initially intended to send Lorath, but since he never arrived, we will be taking his place. We head to the Yelesna mines and meet a knight called Vigo. There is a young woman nearby that tells Vigo that she knows what she saw, a horned demon that walked past where we stand. She is concerned since her mother is with that demon, as she questions Vigo why he would let her mother through. Vigo explains that they have soldiers stationed inside. Nayral says that he should be worried for them as well, before turning to us and asking us for help. She tells us that she studies the Herodrum alongside her mother, that they were on something big but her mother ran off, which is unusual for her to abandon the hunt. We tell Vigo that the Reverend's mother sent us, and tell him that the horned woman is the demon Lilith. This scares Nayral, since her mother had taught her the name when she was young, mentioning that she is the daughter of hatred. Vigo asks if Prava was angry at him, before agreeing to lead us into the mine. While inside the mine, Nayral notices that Vigo is wearing her mother's charm on his wrist. Vigo says that it's his now, since she gave it to him when he let her and her friend through. We arrive at the internal door when we hear mumbling on the other side. When we get through, we find that all of the station knights are dead on the floor, but luckily one is still breathing, barely. Vigo asks him what happened, and the knight responds that it was the woman that they were escorting. Not Nayral's mother, but the woman accompanying them. He says that she wasn't human, that she turned into a demon like the statue outside. She claimed she mothered sanctuary, and then it was a bloodbath. Nayral asks him what happened to Vinard, her mother. The knight responds that she begged for her life and Lilith spared her and led her deeper inside the mine. The knight tells Vigo that nothing worked on Lilith, that he needs to tell Prava to raise the army and that the father himself needs to know that evil itself walks in sanctuary. Vigo mentions that he shouldn't have trusted Vinard when she told him that the charm would bring him good fortune. Nayral realizes that her mother had bribed Vigo with the charm so that he would allow her inside the mine since nobody was meant to be let through at all. Nayral believes that her mother can still be saved, but Vigo says that he will not continue onwards. He will report back to Prava, and Nayral calls him a coward and asks us to help her, which we agree to. As we make our way through the demon-infested mines, we find blood petals on the floor. When we approach them, we can see small glimpses of the past. This time, the conversations between Lilith and Vinard. We can see from the beginning that Vinard is terrified of Lilith. But Lilith tells her that she has what she seeks, knowledge, that she dragged her child across sanctuary in pursuit of it, and since she knows the very fabric of the cosmos, she can give her answers to any questions she might have. Vinard is concerned since everything that she has ever read has warned her against Lilith, but Lilith mentions that she has read so much yet knows so little. Vinard reluctantly agrees to her offer of knowledge. We can find these stones with writing across them that was left by Vinard giving us some backstory on what happened. Even as I write this, I am so confused about how Vinard managed to do this. Firstly, why is she writing on stones as if it's her diary, and is Lilith just standing there while she's doing it? I don't know, a, a bit weird anyway, but the first stone tells us that Lilith saw a way to escape the internal conflict between heaven and hell. It started with the seduction of the angel Inarius. Turns out that he was just as valuable as any man. The second stone explains that she is Sanctuary's mother, and that she used Inarius to craft this world. Bernard says that all her life she sought the origin of mankind, but this entire time, it was always her. From the union of demons and angels came the first generation of humanity. They were powerful and able to move mountains and shake seas. Bernard mentions how Lilith was so proud in the telling of this part, that she bore a son together with Anarius named Rathma. He was the first to untangle the power of necromancy and his lair lies further in the mine. We reach some more petals and we see another vision of the past. Lilith mentions that Vinard is curious why she's been spared before telling her that she is going to meet her son. Lilith describes him as being the key to her plans. The next vision shows Lilith mentioning how she can sense pain from Vinard and that she misses her daughter. Vinard says that she knows her daughter will be scared right now, 
Lilith gives her a choice. She could go or stay. Fernard chooses to stay, saying that her daughter will be fine since she's strong. Lilith is happy with the choice and tells her that to reach Rathma, they will need to perform a ritual, which she will teach her. And the first lesson is that blood is the key. We manage to find Vinard who has drawn patterns and writing in her own blood on the ground. When Nairal approaches, she tells her daughter that across the necropolis is a trove of magic and knowledge. She opened the way for Lilith, but she could not pass through with her because she lacks the divine element. Nairal pleads with her mother to stop, concerned by her mother writing in her own blood. We begin to see that Vinard has changed significantly, telling her that Lilith has awakened her showing her things that she can't put into words. Nairel tells her that she doesn't care what she was shown, and attempts to grab her mother's arm to guide her out of the mines. Bernard pulls a knife out on her own daughter, calling her clever, trying to lead her away so she can take all of this for herself. Sounding crazy as hell, by the way. She cuts Nairel as she tells her that she will finish drawing these runes with our blood instead. She goes full demonic witch mode, as she begins summoning demons to fight us. We manage to fight them off, but it ends with Vinard dying. Nairel is distraught and says that Lilith will pay for what she's done, and tells us to go back to Reverend Mother Prava to get blessed, since this will cause us to have blessed blood, allowing us to enter Rathma's tomb. She asks us to meet her in the Mistral Woods, which contains a hidden vault that belongs to the Herodrum. We head back to the cathedral and speak to Iosif, he tells us that the Reverend Mother is at Kor Valar, and to go and seek our blessing there. We head to Kor Valar and find Vigo near a pyre. He's burning the bodies of the lost knights from the mine. He tells us that he came clean to Prava about taking the woman's bribe, and that it's looking bad. He might not even have a job when she's done with him. He says that he's going to join us as we go speak with her, as she might go easier on him if we're there, really showing just how Vigo only cares about himself or thinks about himself. We find the Reverend's mother inside and she is arranging the redeployment of soldiers into the mine. We ask her for a blessing, but she tells us that we must first be made worthy of a blessing. We will have to make a pilgrimage to the Alabaster Monastery to cleanse our spirit. We find Vigo outside and he tells us that there is this shrine to the west that bears a relic. It takes on your sin, weighing you down. It will cleanse you, which prepares you to stand before the Father for judgment. He says that he will not take part in it as he doesn't believe that he would survive the journey. We find the relic and complete the pilgrimage. Succeeding in our atonement, we find Vigo at the final altar and he is attempting to pray for the very first time. He is clearly feeling very guilty for taking the bribe that leads to the death of his men. He questions the type of man that he is. He tells us that we are about to meet Inarius himself and that not everybody comes back. We enter the Hall of Ascension, and we can find a mural on the wall that shows Anarius healing a woman that has been plagued with sickness since childhood, giving her a new life. It turns out that the woman is Reverend Mother Prava. We head into the main room, and we can see a giant mural of Anarius on the wall. As the real Anarius begins to levitate down towards us, he asks us what we want, and we tell him that we need to traverse the Black Lake, and we cannot do so without his blessing. He mentions one thing that he has learned during his time in Sanctuary, that what we're looking for and what we need are really the same thing. He once thought he could find uh, into the war, but has never found a resolution, only more pain. Everything that he has done has pulled him further from his home in the heavens. He says how the world they made was born from the impossible, but much like its creators, it rots from the inside. This confuses us as we explain that Lilith has entered the ancient city, and with his blessing we can pursue her. This pisses off Anarius, calling humankind weak and that this world has been wasted on the crusades of the unworthy. We tell him that we can stop her and he tells us that the audience has now concluded and we are forced to leave. We head back to the Reverend Mother and ask her why Anarius is in Sanctuary. She says that it's due to penitent, that heaven cast him down for creating humanity as it is seen as a sin. He now seeks redemption and a chance to go home. It's prophesied that slaying Lilith is that chance. Anarius believes that the prophecy describes a spear of light piercing hatred's heart. He will begin with Lilith and then move on to the prime deities, concluding the eternal conflict. We also ask about Vigo and she says that he will do his penance. 
We mentioned that our talks with Anarius didn't go all that great, but she tells us that the fact that we came back unscathed is approval enough, and she gives us our blessing. We head out to find Nairao in the woods, and we end up in a strange place filled with phantoms. We find a wolf that tells us that we're stuck in an illusion created by the Herodrum, and shows us a portal that will lead us through the trap. We arrive at a vision of Tristram. We ask the wolf who they are, and he says that he is an admirer, that he saved us in the mountains and the cave during the blizzard. We would have frozen to death if not for him. He is the demonic wolf that we saw. We ask him why he saved us, and he says that we want to stop Lilith and he wants us to succeed in our mission, but tells us that we will never succeed if we follow the Herodrum. Also, listen to this wolf's goddamn voice. The Herodrum of old imprisoned Diablo, the Lord of Terror beneath the earth. Between him and Lorith, I'm starting to get really jealous. He tells us that one day the Herodrum will stumble, and we shouldn't be there when they do. We ask what this place is. He explains that this is Tristram, the Herodrum of the imprisoned Diablo, the Lord of Terror beneath the earth. They built this town nearby, and as you can see, it didn't go so well. He also tells us that he knows that we were fed Lilith's blood and asks if we feel ourselves changing yet. With Lilith walking in our world, it's only a matter of time. We continue through the portal to Nairel and she is standing inside the old Herodric vault. She says that we are looking for a book that contains a spell that could help us cross the Black Lake. We find the book and Nairel mentions that a ledger was written by the Herodrum, chronicling spells that were created by Rothma. She feels that this book could work that Rothma's necromancy spells could help bring her mother back since she knows the ritual to cross the Black Lake. We make it back to the mine and Nairel begins to cast the spell on her mother's body. This causes her mother's soul to re-enter her body. Nairel tells her mother that she will find a way to save her, and Vinard responds that she cannot be saved from her own mistakes, reiterating that this body is only a husk and Nairel must allow her spirit to pass on. She tells her daughter to move on without her, but will help her one last time by finishing the ritual. Our blessed blood is the key, and we are able to continue into the lair. We find remnants of Rothma, as he tells us that we are the last visitor to the sanctum, and we have come too late, just like Lilith before us. He reveals that his father Anarius was the first to arrive, and that it unfolded just like his visions. He says how his visions began in dreams, images of the end of sanctuary, a great serpent carried these visions. His own thoughts melded with the serpents and the future was mended together. From this, he created the prophecy. This prophecy became his burden and he knew that Inarius would be driven to interfere, believing it was about him since he saw himself as the savior, piercing hatred's heart in hell. So Rothma locked the gates of hell. And when Inarius found out, he would come demanding the key. We now see a glimpse of Inarius meeting with Rothma. He is mad at Rothma for standing in the way of the saviour, that the holy blood in his veins should be boiling. Rothma mentions that nothing Anarius does will change the future he saw, and that he creates his own destiny. As we reach the final levels of the passage, we come across a demon that was left here by Lilith. It's a tough fight, and we're joined by a knight penitent that helps us survive the fight. When the fight's over, he collapses in front of us and we open up the armour. Inside is Vigo serving his penance for his sins by helping us on our journey. He asks if Nero is safe and asks us to give Vinar's charm back to her daughter, claiming that he should never have taken it. As he is dying, he mentions how it's so dark, wondering if it was too late, even though he has repented. We tell him that the light has come to carry him home and if he can see it. He looks over and says that he can and that they've come to claim him before finally dying. We get another scene of Anarius telling Rothman to hand over the key. Rothma says that he saw a vision of the key being lifted from his corpse under the eyes of the watchful serpent in the sanctum. We go to the sanctum and we find the corpse of Rothma on the stairs. We reach him and get a vision. We see Lilith entering the tomb, back when we found Vinard before. We can see Rothma has been killed by a spear to the heart. Lilith mourns her son and breaks the spear. She says that the key unlocks the part of the future and that it was only made possible due to Rothma's sacrifice, and that sacrifice will not be in vain. We leave and return to Nairel. We tell her about Vigo and return the charm. We also explain what we saw in the sanctum. We get more narration from Larath. He explains that this young girl seeking her mother, seeking hope, 
but she ultimately found neither. He goes on to say that her part in this story is far from over. In fact, we would need her much more than she would need us, despite not realizing this at the time, and that ends the very first act of Diablo 4. Before we get into the prophecy, if you are still watching after all this time, I want you to write Daughter of Hatred in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this far, by the way. Okay, so Rathma's prophecy was, I saw my corpse and from my mouth crawled hatred. A father burned his children on a pyre and a mother molded a new age from the ashes. Rothma explained that he saw his own corpse, alluding to his eventual death from his father Anarius. From his mouth crawled hatred. That could suggest his unwillingness to submit to Anarius's demands, or the fact that his mother came afterwards, the literal daughter of hatred. A father burned his children on a pyre. The only pyre that we saw in Act 1 was Vigo burning his soldiers. This would make sense in the fact that Vigo is their leader, hence a father figure, and felt immense guilt for their deaths, which led him to repent his sins. A mother molded a new age from the ashes. This is probably referring to Lilith claiming the key, molding a new age from the ashes of the spear. I saw the weak made strong, a pack of lambs feasting on wolves. Tears of blood rained on the desert jewel, and the way to hell was torn asunder. Then came a spear of light, piercing hatred's heart, and he who was bound in chains was set free. This part of the prophecy I believe will be revealed as the new acts are shown once the game fully releases. Also, let me know if you want me to break down the rest of Diablo 4 when it does release. I hope you found the video fun and informative. If you did, please consider liking the video as it helps out the channel a heap. If you want to see more story-based videos in the future, be sure to subscribe. Until next time, peace.